type of lisp. I'm also a free software enthusiast and also occasionally dub in. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I, I, I'm, a, I'm also like a free BSD slash Linux uh, enthusiast and I also preach a lot of Emacs. If you know me really well, I will. I will try to force Emacs down your throat once in a while, though, because it makes all computing simple. The screen again. Oh, oh, I need to share my screen again. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Allow. Yes, 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 yes. Now we are talking. Uh, let's go back. Uh, so uh, what functional package management tools offer is that uh, for a given set of inputs, and in this case, the inputs are build scripts, it can be like a compiler, a patch to a library, a library itself, or even a URL that points to like, let's say a CDN. You'll always get the same output and that output is usually codified in uh, your directory name. So I'll talk about that later. Uh, also, uh, like, uh, so the whole build and installation process is a pure function, and this guarantees reproducibility, and also it guarantees it guarantees uh, reproducibility and transparency, and also it allows for some fancy optimizations. So other solutions outside Geeks that offer that have a similar concept is Nix and Flatpak. So a bit of historical context here: uh, Geeks is based off Nix. Uh, the difference between Nix and Geeks is that if you've used Nix before, they have this uh, DSL that's very unique to uh, Nix. And it's a bit frustrating to use because you're learning this DSL and you can only use it within the Nix ecosystem. So what Gix does differently is it uses Guile, which is a scheme. And Guile is the official GANU extension language for, for, the, GANU, for the GANU project. In fact, Guile stands for GANU Ubiquitous Something Extension Language. Forget what the I and L mean. Yeah, but it's the official like uh, extension language for GANU. So if you learn Guile within the context of Geeks, you can always use Guile outside Scheme. I mean, outside the Geeks ecosystem. And also, you can use all these fancy libraries that Guile comes with, comes with inside Geeks. So that gives you a lot of power and freedom. So um, another cool concept that Geeks does is that all the repositories you have within that, the official Geeks repository is free. They are GPL compatible. They do not allow any non, they do not allow any like non-free stuff there. For example, Firefox uses a non-GPL compliant license. So instead you'd find IceCat. However, if you need to have these things, you can define your own channels. So channels is just like a concept where you'll define your own packages, say Firefox or like some other non-free things. Yeah, also there's this Steam, uh, a bunch of games. You can define them there and then you can use them within your system. Uh, so for speed, uh, if, you, if you start using Geeks uh, regularly, you'll be downloading, you'll be building things, and that can be time intensive. So to help save on time, instead of building things, there's this concept of having substitute servers. So remember earlier on, I mentioned that uh, this is like a functional system where if you have the same inputs, you'll always have the same outputs. So somewhere on some server, like these things have been built for you. They are called substitute servers. And since uh, the inputs that the inputs to this build and the inputs on your own machine are the same, the binary will always be the same. The binary blob at the end of the build will be the same on the substitute server. So instead of building your own 
instead of building your own things, you can just download it from a uh, substitute server. And then uh, you can set up your own substitute server, which is like a single command you run. And you have your own substitute server if you own a VPS. Uh, so that's like a big plus. Uh, so why gigs? Uh, so the problem with a lot of distros, uh, there's a high barrier to entry to like packaging. Say like uh, it's rare to meet someone who like uh, tries to package on things in say Ubuntu or like Debian or even Arch. And also there's a lack of uh, there's a lack of proper uh, let's see there's a lack of proper package management tools and most of these ecosystems are plagued with esoteric configurations that can appear uh, magical uh, and also there's no uh, in some ecosystems there's also like a barrier there's, there's like an implementation language barrier for example nix nix has that problem uh, so what gigs offers is uh, it has a lower barrier to entry because you can learn scheme in a day because uh, uh, in my own personal experience uh, i learned scheme in a short time and i was able to start packaging in like in a span of less than two weeks I was like packaging things that would be used in our production system. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to talk about like uh, the specific aspects of gigs that make it like desirable to use for like a normal user. So number one, it's free. It follows like a uh, proper, it, fo it follows like a proper, uh, like a system distribution guidelines as defined by GANU. And also, if you're like a hacker, it's easy to hack around with because it's, it's extensible in the sense that you can define your own packages. Uh, you can hack around things in Lisp. You can extend kicks, and they've made it very easy to do that. And also, you have hashes. So uh, let me give you an example of what a hash is. So this is a JavaScript library. When you download it, to verify that this is what is defined in this URL here, like GitHub, jQuery cookie version 1.31, you have this hash. So if for some strange reason, uh, this fella changed anything on that server, this build will fail. So it's transparent and you'll, and you'll always guarantee that what you're downloading is what you get because you've already, the hash is already defined in your, in your, in your, in your package definition and also you have like a per user package installation so a good example of that is uh, how i work with my gigs profile is i download everything uh, i download everything in a given user profile that's like uh, in my case bonfis m and then everything related to my work because i do not want all this uh, biology packages to like pollute my environment i'll create a separate i'll create a separate profile for it elsewhere and then i'll use that when working so that's like really convenient so another powerful feature geeks has because it's functional uh you can list out generations of packages you had so if at one point you had downloaded say Emacs 25, you could always roll back your, em your Emacs back to like 25. So you have a history of all the packages you downloaded. And then you can choose to go back to that history if you want. Uh, so uh, since, pa since, uh, since Geeks is functional, it allows for some very unique, uh, some very interesting optimizations. So for example, let's say you have a system like where you have different user profiles. Like you have like user A, user B, user C, user D. And then user A downloads Emacs version 26. So the, the, um, the Emacs this person downloads will be only isolated to, will only be isolated to user A. 
However, if user B downloads the same Emacs, instead of building everything from scratch, you'll reuse what was downloaded by Emacs A. It will become available to that person instead of rebuilding everything from scratch. So you could think of this as a as a as a like a distro level of like momization. So you also have like a dependency graphs that are very explicit. Uh, so another cool thing I need to mention now is that um, everything you download in everything you download is in a in something called like a ganusto like slash ganusto i'll demo this at the end of the talk to show like where every package is uh downloaded and then in this store uh, what your profile does is it just links to items on that store but then uh, geeks does all that heavy lifting for you and there's like uh, an under and there's like a user-friendly api that it exposes to you to interact with it um so since uh since uh since geeks is runs on top of gale it can run on any linux distro since gale can run on any linux uh, this too. You can also get. You can also like get. Uh, you can also get packages from other places like GNU, PyPy, Gem, Cpan, TextLive, JSON, Hackage from a bunch of different places. And this is how that looks like. When you run, say, let's say I want to install GitFame or get a package definition for GitFame on my system, I just run something like Git import PyPy GitFame, and then I'll get this package definition. I'll be like. This is version 1.1. Here's the hash of that package. I'll use like a Python build system for this. And these are all the dependencies for GitFilm. And there's the home page. And then you could always update the license later. Uh, so another interesting thing is that um, it's uh, when you install packages in your profile, it's safe in the sense that whatever you install in your profile cannot alter, there's no global state. So you do not like updating anything in slash user slash bin or like slash bin or slash s bin. So whatever you install won't interact with some other person's profile or, 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 or like whatnot. So things are safe. What you do is isolated to your own profile your own user namespace so uh, finally there are some things there are some very fancy things you can do with geeks say parking and uh, sharing things or even building containers uh, building containers to share with other people like say for example i wanted to share inksy the package inksy to siri i just like run this command inksy and then it'll output the zip file, uh, this thing in the tar.gz, just zip it. And then I can share it with Ray and he'll run it. And this will be the exact same version of Vix with all its dependency, dependencies that's running on my machine. So also you can choose to pack a package you've written inside Docker. So Gix also allows for that. You just like package it, uh, give it, give it an extra flag, say Docker, and then later I can share that uh, with someone else and they can run it inside a Docker instance. So this is especially useful if you're working with someone who doesn't have gigs or if someone who's like is on a separate platform, like say Windows. Uh, so gigs also supports other, other file systems or other ways of, of like packing things. And one of them is SquashFS. I've never really needed to use that though so far. Uh, so another cool thing is deploys. Uh, if you run an instance in production that trans gigs, you can use gigs deploy. There's a there's a command gigs deploy to run to like deploy your software. However, if you want to like install things, uh, if you want to install uh packages using geeks uh on like on a on a server 
they are hacks and personally i use like ansible ansible and then i just explicitly run gix commands but um this is a work in progress and it's something that like uh should i think will be like improved on like uh making 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 deploys on systems that run gix uh, easier uh so i also have to mention the concept of having like a manifest file so um if i want to share all the packages that i have with my system i can just like export it to a manifest.scr file share it with someone else and then they can reproduce at least uh package wise what i have in my system so this is really useful for me when i'm using or when i'm using a different machine i'll just generate a manifest file for my profile go to a new machine uh run the manifest file and then i just have reproduced everything that i had on my own laptop so that's really cool uh so examples so here's an example of like a channel which has definitions for which has definitions for uh what is thing called which has definitions for like uh, bioinformatics packages that i that i help to like run so you can have a look at that later uh so here's an example of a of a of an example of a of a um, of a package i helped like uh, define so i chose to use like a javascript and uh, library an old deprecated library to show how extensible uh how flexible gix is so a bit of context here uh so where i work we chose to like package all our dependencies inside gix those include like uh, javascript uh, libraries uh so you could you could uh within gigs you can like not only define like anything that you can uh do computation on using unix tools you can package it inside gigs and here's a good example of it so the idea is i have a i have a javascript jquery library it's it, its repository is listed here on this github url here's the hash and then i'm like copy this thing into this into this location in my gix profile into this specific fold, folder and then as its input it's this source i defined here this definition this source this block that's that's it and once i run that i'll have i'll have uh, the library copied on that location and then i can serve it using whatever library i want using whatever framework i want yeah um and that's it for like uh, for me and this talk uh so your help is really welcome uh if you want to like uh have conversations around gigs people are really active on the gigs rc channel and people are, are very 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 friendly yeah so you can report bugs packages uh you can add packages if you want so that's it for this talk so before i open uh this for any further conversation i want to run i want to show you what the gig store is and i'm going to use bash ganu store uh so just a minute souls out yeah so uh as you can see like this weird like output like everything you ever install on your gigs machine will be put in this store and then the name is this this weird hash plus the package name so this weird hash thing like the 00213 it's a combination of all the build inputs you had originally so it will form this name so this guarantees that you always have like a consistent output if i may call it that you always have like a consistent output that's codified in the name and then this uh for some of these folders uh you use this now to build now your package uh in gigs and uh, that's it for me for this talk uh questions are welcome uh i'm taking questions now Uh hello. Hey, so thank you for that. 
I have a question and uh, it's from your experience of using uh, gigs, um, what are some uh, downsides? What are some things that bother you or some quirk about, about it as a tool? Space, uh, space, it can consume a lot of space. Uh, like I know for the gigs, uh, the gigs bioinformatics package we use because we have a lot of unnecessary dependencies. Downloading one small package that's like less than 100 MB will take 20 GB because of this whole weird dependency graph. So you see, when you're defining a package, you like the the inputs to this package you have are very, very explicit. So if your dependency graph is crazy, you you end up you end up having like some massive, some massive uh, downloading like uh, massive things just to build one single package. Yeah, and then it consumes space because you have these previous uh, packages you downloaded. So if you have like say 50 history, if you have 50 generations of packages, that's like a, a whole lot of space. Uh, so this is a nuance, but the solution that the Kicks community as for this is uh, the idea of garbage collection. So you can uh, you can run like gigs garbage collect, then delete uh, delete unused packages or like clear caches you don't need. Yeah, but space is like a big problem. Another problem is when you need to have like some very custom packages. Uh, if you if you want to like say Firefox, at one point I remember I wanted Firefox so badly because I love Firefox. And then I couldn't find like a gig's definition for it. And when I wanted to write one, it was like really complicated. So yeah, so it's like another pain point. If your package is not within gigs and if it's not easy to use, you'd maybe have to like, look for like other solutions. Yeah. So those are the ones that come to mind quickly. Cool, thanks. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, yeah. Oh, popping tonic. Thanks, man. <laughs> Ogmo, Ogmo, these kickers. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm saying Ogmo. I've seen. I'm just seeing. I'm reading the comments here. Oh yeah. I also have a question. Yeah. Two questions actually. Yeah. So yeah. the first one is like my experience. Uh, with with guile is like it gets a, a, it gets like very tedious to write i was using it trying to extend uh, make so are there is there like a standard library for it because like coming to guile from something like uh, chicken it's it's a bit like a lot of work to to write before you start focusing on what you want to do there's a lot of things you have to define and then the other question is yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you can use uh, gigs with things like uh, Hackage and PyPy. So does that mean... Yes. Does that mean like uh, the package you want to use and if all of its dependencies have to have been defined within gigs or you can just... Only just the like the top uh, package has to be defined and then it will use the dependency resolution for Python to install. Ah, uh, so that's a that's a good question. So for the first question, uh, how long ago was this that you used Gail? Like how long? Because it's like a major upgrade to Gail three this year, and with that, like there are like um a more sena library and like there are major improvements. Uh, with that, and also, um, uh, Gail's philosophy and Chicken's philosophy. Oh, for people who don't know what Chicken is, Chicken is a scheme dialect. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's an opinionated scheme uh, dialect. Uh, so with like um, standard like libraries within Gail, I know with Gail three point three the situation has improved. And also another thing you need to keep in mind when using Gail is this thing was written as a as a bare bones scripting like language with like very few say like dependencies like within that stdlib. Because the idea is you need to, it's a language you, you write to like extend things. So if you like really want, say, some library, say from C, you can just like hook it up within 
like uh, within Guile using its API. Does that like answer your question? So it's a bit frustrating if you come from like other scheme families, like say Racket or or Racket or what's this thing called Racket or Chicken, because those guys give you batteries. Like some of their still exists, like they have a lot of things, and you lack these things in Guile. So you you have to you have to like put in that effort to like to like incorporate them within Guile. So I understand that. But at the same time, keep in mind that they want to keep this thing really, really slim and really, really tiny. So that's uh, the first question. Uh, for the second question, uh, once you run the, the gigs import, pi, 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 uh, those dependencies you have to define for yourself. You you have to, you have to like define for yourself. It was not it will it will it will it won't like resolve itself using Python tools. It just won't. You have to define those by yourselves. So if one of those inputs is not defined, you have to go ahead and like now define them for yourself. Uh, so it's uh, some work, but in my opinion, it's worth it because it makes them very explicit. Yeah, but keep in mind if some of those inputs had already been defined within the original, like the GANU, GANU, what's this thing called? The original like uh, GANU definitions, you don't have to redefine them again. Yeah. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah. Um, um, so this question is more about Guile. Yes, um, yes. So, uh, how, how do you see its package management tools and like uh, how, how, how it is, how you can extend them directly? Because it feels like, um, the lang the language uh, language like Rust has a really good growing popularity is because the tooling around packaging is built in into the language. It makes it super so useful uh, to, because all of the things that are there, there's, there's already a standard place for things to be done. There's already a standard thing to be done. Are you seeing such thing that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, so with Guy, Guy doesn't really like give you like a packaging tool. It's more like when gigs came, they used Kyle as a language. You know, it's like like uh, like uh, Gale is a language independent of uh, Geeks. So Geeks built a domain-specific language that uses Gale. Okay, sure. So it, it's not like it's not like Gale gives you Geeks. It's like Geeks just uses Gale. So within Geeks, you can use everything that Gale provides. So you can extend, uh, you can extend all these things that like. Uh, Gail, you can you can you can choose to like extend your own guide and then use that within gigs in your own unique ways because i've seen some magic in some package definitions like some crazy person can just decide to wake up and define like an npm build system it hasn't been done but if someone wants it really badly they can do it yeah so that's it for for Gail. So also like a commentary on the like, crust and languages generally, I feel like uh, the usage of languages, it's more of uh, the marketing, marketing around it and the ecosystems it was built for. Because I've noticed uh, with geeks, uh, Rex, I'll answer your question after this. So I've noticed with like languages, like uh, the schemes and lisps, they are usually used heavily in research and academia but outside that i haven't like seen it mainstream usage mainstream usage per se and outside closure and i'd attribute that to like just like uh I'd, I'd, i would attribute that to like marketing marketing like uh, i think we both agree here yeah, that trust is kind of like heavily marketed yeah, out yeah. there Good idea. yeah so this is like another commentary. I see what you mean. Uh, so uh, Rex uh, asks uh, Geeks versus Pacman, because Pacman is loaded for being very flexible and scriptable. So usually demonstrated with AUR packages, dependencies seem reasonable. So Geeks versus Pacman. Uh, so I love, I prefer Geeks. Because you see, the problem I have with Pacman is if I install Emacs, everyone has Emacs. Everyone, every user has 
every user in my system has new apps. Like in my current laptop, I inherited this laptop from my older brother. So he has his own, he has his own, he has his own profile, he has his own user user space. So with Pacman and AUR, if I install, if I decide to like the other day I, I removed Haskell. And I also removed Haskell for him because he uses it. So that means when he comes back, he'd have to now like reinstall Haskell. And also another problem I have with uh, Pacman and AUR is that uh I can't there isn't like a concept of transactions per se. Like uh if I want to install a specific version of Emacs, I just like pray to God that some person on AUR or the upstream uh, Pacman repositories, someone packaged it. If it wasn't packaged, I'd have to like build it from scratch. And then I'd have to now like start struggling with like some linking things and using the correct version of Emacs. It's a, it's a, it's a headache. Like the problem Pacman and AUR have is that it has all these problems that mutation brings in like normal programming. You know, you have this global state, so it's your work to keep it clean. It's your work to always keep track of this quote unquote global state. And then you can't really isolate packages from each other. You can't really, you can't decide I'll run Emacs in this space. You can't do that. So that's why I'd prefer gigs. So my normal setup is, my normal setup is, I'll have Pacman handle those things that I can't, like those things everyone needs. Like, and it's usually really, really, really minimal. And then I'll have gigs handle everything else. So in my specific setup, uh, gigs has, I've installed, I only, I am the only person who has access to Emacs to XWM, to Firefox. I've, in, I, no, I, I've installed yeah, I've installed Firefox within Geeks, yes. I've used that channel for that. So that means when John comes and reclaims this laptop, he has nothing. He'll have to install things for himself. Yes. And also, uh, an interesting point uh, Popping Tonic has brought up is that uh, packaging in Pac-Man is weird. Uh, that's, 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 that's true. That's true. And then you have to pray to God no one breaks things upstream. Have you guys ever like downloaded thing in have you ever like downloaded something in Pacman or in app repositories and then it just doesn't work? And then you have to go online in communities and and like try to look for like workarounds and try to figure out why is this thing not working? You know, and then if it's a known bug, you have to submit like you have to submit like a bug report and then hope that the maintainer will have a look at it and then fix things. It's just like it's a hassle. If something does not work, it's it's a pain for you as a user. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, is there any other question? Uh, so this is like an interesting conversation going on on the on the channel. Uh, so does anyone have any other question or like commentary? Uh, so it looks like that's it with the questions. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. That was a really interesting talk um, on gigs and uh, functional package management. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Popping Tony Cox wants to speak. Uh, so my question was uh, uh, basically trying to think. So since this is what can be built on top of it, like what what, what extra forms of automation can be added here? Uh, with kicks. Yeah. Um. So. <clears throat> uh, I think the power of kicks that I've seen so far. Oh, so with automation so far. Uh, in, the, in that gigs ecosystem or rather how i handled it is like i used tools like ansible to run gigs command remotely uh but the power that i've seen with gigs is like the ability to define your own packages on a whim yeah uh, so i've seen that uh in the context of like my day job 
uh, like someone woke up and was like dudes we are replacing like we are replacing every javascript instance in our library we are packaging it inside the kicks we are isolating this thing you know and i just like did that work in like a span of like a week i was able to I was able to just like uh come up with package definitions in javascript and then keep in mind i did not like i have never done packaging before in my life and i did all this work without like supervision or like direction i just like read the docs and i was like hmm, this is how you do this extended it so it's more like the barrier to entry to writing new packages is surprisingly low it's like uh surprisingly low and then uh and uh you 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 brought like another interesting question like uh extending in terms of like automation and maybe like add 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 to that like adding devops tools i feel like the ecosystem is so flexible you can just like uh wake up and start building a tool of your own so an example of that is uh let me share the link uh ship dog um An example of like a DevOps tool like uh will be working on in the coming like in the next uh one two months is monitoring things. Uh so let me post the link. Uh let me post the link control V. So an example of like a DevOps tool like I want to build is like Shipdog. Uh being able to like monitor services. Uh we call them ships and like barking you know like a dog barks bark a barking when things go wrong so gail and geeks make building that tool really surprisingly easy yeah uh so other than that on matters automation uh you just use other tools like ansible to do to handle that for you cool yeah oh but if you have like a, a geek system on in production uh git provides you with a, like a command deploy that you can use to like just deploy software on that on that on that machine but the problem it's only isolated to git's the distribution okay that brings up another question so does it have the same kind of uh, live reload uh, uh, options when when uh, when running or setting up packages themselves since Uh, what there, do you mean there, there, there is an interpreter they are running there is a scheme interpreter they are they are running when uh, like so do you use the same kind of debug and cycle debug tools and, and the cycles whenever whenever you are uh, changing the definitions on the fly ah, like yes. you are writing the definitions in a repl and uh, actually like seeing results in real time yes 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 but for that you have to get your hands dirty and understand some low level things of how like packages work because i've had to do that like once or twice so uh, geeks provides you with this programming api that you can use to interact with the store directly when debugging things Neat. so you just have that on your repl and if you like an emacs end user it's uh they, they are like fancy extensions uh there's like a gigs there's a gigs package you can use within emacs that makes life easier yeah and then and then um so if you like a really curious person if you like a curious person it's like a plus because because you get to understand how some um some math concepts are used like uh i know within gigs to hand, to make things uh to avoid side effects uh there's this concept of having a store monad like having a monad handling handling uh mutations within the context of like a monad you know so that's like a really intellectually stimulating if you into that kind of thing and you can read about it on the what's this thing called on the on the docs so let me post it here monad uh awesome thank you so i've just posted the link yeah